People want to go on the internet and check out their friends, so why not build a website that offers that friends, pictures, profiles? I'm talking about taking the entire social experience of college and putting it online. It used to be that kids were free to play outside with their friends all night. Due to changing times, it is no longer safe to do that. Kids mostly play inside. They are on the internet all day and barely even speak to each other face to face anymore. They now use social networking to communicate. What used to be known as a word of mouth is now world of mouth. A never ending world of status updates, photos, and opinions. News that used to take months to spread now takes seconds. That high school sweetheart you thought you would never see again is now right in front of your eyes. Those kids who get pushed into lockers at school and made fun of are now prone to the new type of teasing on the computer called cyberbullying. Now what happens in Vegas stays on the internet. A social network named Facebook is responsible for all of these things. Facebook connects the world easier and faster than ever. As we enter this new age of communication, Facebook is a turning point in history. The internet has revolutionized how we interact with each other. The first email was sent in 1971, which was the first time people had communicated over their internet. In 1978, BBS, Bulletin Board Systems, exchanged data over phone lines with other users. One of the web's first social networking sites, GeoCities, was founded in 1994. Here, users created their own websites. Then, a year later, the Globe.com fabricated on GeoCities' idea and gave their users the freedom to personalize by creating their own sites and interacting with other people who share similar interests. In 1997, AOL Instant Messaging was launched, which was a major step towards fast communication with others via internet. That same year, SixDegrees.com was launched, allowing users to create profiles and have friends on the website. In 2000, the early social networking sites and the dot-com bubble burst led to the stock markets crashing and people were sent to think of new ideas. One of the first new ideas was Friendster, launched in 2002, creating an online connection of real-world friends. As a response to Friendster, MySpace was launched, and it was basically a clone of Friendster. In the years to come, many other social networking sites were created, including LinkedIn and Classmates.com. What would begin in a Harvard student's dorm room would soon become a global social network and a revolution in communication. Mark Zuckerberg was just an unknown student who was studying at psychology at Harvard University. He was not a very social person due to his hobby of computer programming. First, he created a campus-based social networking site called Course Match, which allowed people studying at Harvard to see who else was taking courses similar to them. Then, he moved on to Face Match, a system which allowed students to rank other students based on their looks. It wasn't until early 2004 that Zuckerberg would begin working on the site that would actually become the Facebook we know and love today. Mark launched the beta site, thefacebook.com, on the 4th of February 2004. However, you don't get to 500 million friends without making a few enemies. Right after the facebook.com was launched, seniors Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss and their friend Divya Narenda filed a lawsuit against Zuckerberg for stealing an idea that they had that was similar to the Facebook.com. The Facebook was originally launched as an online yearbook of sorts for the staff and students of Harvard. Then it began spreading to colleges all over the nation. In August 2005, the site converted into simply Facebook.com. In September of 2006, Facebook would open its doors to the world and for anyone who wanted to register an account, moving firmly into position to become the social media giant it is known as today. It was to make something where you could type in someone's name and find out a bunch of information about them. Facebook has penetrated so deep within our society that even our nation's president is an active user. For the 2012 presidential election, President Barack Obama used Facebook as a way to reach young voters. Nowadays, 34% of adults in the United States use Facebook to discuss politics. Political officials can use Facebook to spread their message farther and wider than any predecessor has. They can reach deep into society to seek public opinions from average people instead of the media. They don't have to force feed information to people just as public broadcasting does. Facebook is a global communication tool as well. Leaders of different nations can connect with each other and discuss foreign policies. Conferences between countries can be held face to face through the video chat application on Facebook. Facebook is a new way to discuss politics and will continue to develop in the years to come. Uh I want everybody here to be careful about 
what you post on Facebook. <laughs> Not only is Facebook changing politics, it is also changing the world economically. Facebook can be a huge boost for businesses. Businesses can use Facebook to gain awareness, consideration, preference, intent, purchase, support, loyalty, and advocacy from customers, which are all factors of what is known as the sales funnel. Companies now have a way to deepen relationships and form bonds with customers as well as business partners in a faster and more efficient way. When people see that a business is helping others, they tend to like that business more and spread their impression of the company with others. This is a great new way to get a company's word out there. For example, Starbucks Coffee had a 38% increase in sales exclusively from their Facebook updates. Having your business on Facebook is a cheap way to advertise. Since questions from customers can be answered instantly on a Facebook wall, the economy is affected by the loss of customer service jobs. For business on Facebook, the possibilities are endless. The launch of Facebook has brought people closer together than ever. Facebook gives people a chance to reconnect with others who they may have lost contact with throughout the years. Now when people ask, hmm, I wonder what happened to Susie Johnson, they can just look her up on Facebook and find out where she lives, how many kids she has, what she does for a living, and even the pets she has. Facebook is the best communication tool on the internet because when someone posts something, all of their friends on Facebook can see it, which can range from one person to 5,000 people. In a matter of seconds, all these people can find out what you're up to or a problem you have faced, making this a fundamental shift in the way we communicate. The world comes together in a sense, because it doesn't matter what country you live in or what culture you have, we can all interact with one another. From this, we can all learn about the world we live in than we have ever been able to do before. Facebook also plays a tremendous role in spreading news, especially during disasters. People can be aware of what is happening in the world at all times, when in the past, events could take months to spread. Facebook has the power to reconnect people with similar interests, which creates new friendships. Many people are beginning to find love through Facebook as well. Also, people who are socially handicapped have a chance to feel more comfortable opening up to others. In that case, Kids who have chronic illnesses can share what they are going through with other kids who are going through the same thing. People can express themselves through Facebook and seek advice, as people can comment and share what they think. This is a very easy way to get a public opinion or approval on a subject. Along with the upsides of Facebook come the downsides. It has been known to divide, diminish, and disorient our society. People, mostly teenagers, can abuse the openness of the site. Cyberbullying has been a massive issue in our society recently with the use of Facebook. People are tempted to share all their personal information with everyone, which makes them very vulnerable to harassment, stalking, hacking, impersonation, and possibly abduction. People don't feel as worse when they cyberbully because they are behind a computer screen. A new survey shows that top colleges look at students' Facebook pages as a new feature of the application process. 38% of admission officers said that what they saw negatively affected their view of the applicant due to inappropriate pictures and posts. Only a quarter of the schools who check students' Facebook pages increase their chance of getting accepted into the college. Now, their Facebook page can get in the way of them getting into their dream college. It is now evident that the creation of Facebook is a turning point in history. Facebook has been a turning point for politics in which leaders can spread their message faster and farther than any predecessor has before. It has affected economics by making it easier than ever to get the word out about a business. Socially, it has completely changed the way we communicate with others and receive information. With Facebook, the world is no longer divided. We are one big family. We know all about each other and can help each other with the problems we face. From this point, we can only move forward. What will be next for Facebook? Time is the only answer. Facebook is a turning point in history and will be reflected upon for years to come. Um, our whole goal in doing this was to get out to our community important information as quickly as we can. Amazing to us to see how many people knew when school was open and when it was closed based on a Facebook message that went out to all the friends that were connected to that person. My children had a prospective employer go on his Facebook page and got a phone call saying that he didn't like something he saw. My son was shocked and thought it was an invasion of privacy. No, it's not. It's not. It's there. Once you put it there, it's, I don't care what people say, it's pretty much there forever. 